hello and welcome to another video teaching going along with our fear free year bible study this is the bible study where we're taking a look at all the different verses in the bible which are instructive to us on how to live without fear and worry and anxiety in our present day and age and on monday i did a fear free teaching on a beautiful fear free verse found in psalm 56 so many verses in the psalms are just amazing and, and this one was just a great one telling us not to fear a man not to have people pleasing tendencies to put our trust in God and to, to live our life without the worry of what mankind, man is going to think about us. So we did that teaching on Monday together. And if you took the time to read the rest of the Psalm, because you were maybe doing the questions, the homework questions, you'll see that there's another fear-free verse in Psalm 56, which is very, very similar to the one that I talked about on Monday. And if you came across it, across it maybe you thought to yourself, hmm, here's another fear-free verse. And it's almost exactly the same, but it's a little bit different. And I hope that's what you think of when you come across verses like that in the Bible, because it happens all the time. God repeats himself, and sometimes it's exactly, but sometimes it's a little bit different, a little tweak. And when that happens, you've got to stop and think, huh, God has said something here, but he's made it just a, a slight bit difference. There's got to be a reason why. And then you go on a search. Why is it different? Why did God take the time to change it just a little bit? And what should I be paying attention to? This is one of those times in Psalm 56 that I can teach you about this and show you it because we have another fear-free verse that's almost exactly the same, but a little bit different. So let's go back into Psalm 56 and we'll look at the first one and the second one and we'll try to ferret out why God bothered to repeat himself almost exactly, but not quite. So Psalm 56 is a psalm written by King David and it's written at a time you can see the heading that he's been seized by the Philistines so he's he's been taken captive and this is the song that pours out of his heart verse 1 of Psalm 56 be gracious to me O God for man tramples on me all day long an attacker oppresses me my enemies trample on me all day long and many attack me proudly. So this is in, in real time. This is a real thing that's happening. And, and David is saying these Philistines are attacking him, oppressing him, trampling him all day long. They're doing it out of their pride. And this was David's heart at the time when he says <clears throat> in verse three, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you, in God's whose, whose word I praise, in God I trust. I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me. And that was our Monday fear-free verse. It's just David saying, I'm going to put my trust in God, in his word, who, who's, whose word he praises, and he's not going to be afraid because what can flesh do to David? And, and you know what? Flesh can do a lot to David, but David is saying, He's going to put his trust in God. God has come through for him many times before. He's going to praise God's word that, that has all kinds of promises for him. And there are many promises that say, you know, if flesh hurts David, well, then he's going to be with God. So what is there for David to worry about? He's not going to fear flesh. He's not going to be afraid. He's going to put his trust in God and God's word, which promises him much. Now, on Monday, when I taught on this, I said, it's true, that's the, the real context of this, but there's also another side of it where you have to say, you know, flesh really can't do anything to you on this in this present day and age. You, you shouldn't be afraid. You shouldn't be people pleasing a, about man because you're, you know, you have you live for an audience of one if you're a Christ follower. Flesh, flesh, man, you know, their opinion doesn't count. A, a, you know, of you, it doesn't, it doesn't count at all. But there is one piece of flesh that can do damage to you on this planet in this present day and age. And that piece of flesh is you. You're the only man or woman that can hurt you right here and now because you can really listen to yourself, just thinking about it, that that brain in your head is a lump of flesh. It's just an organ churning out thoughts. And a lot of those thoughts are uh, in disbelief of God, in not believing God's promises, in tempting you to, to sin. 
the thoughts of your brain, that lump of flesh, can really do damage to you. They can separate you. They can cause you to turn away from God. So you should be afraid of you. You're the only flesh that you need to be afraid of. And that's why the Bible is very clear. That the thoughts that your lump of flesh in your noggin is churning out, you've got to take those thoughts captive and put them against the Word of God and make sure they're true. Otherwise, you just don't want to believe them or follow them because they can ruin you. They can convince you of tons of lies. And that is the last thing you need. You know, you've been being brainwashed your entire life before you knew Christ and the way of the world and the way of the devil. And so you just can't listen to that lump of flesh in your brain. You've, you've got to be afraid of it. You might not be fearing other flesh, but you, you should be afraid of. And that's where this psalm turns and you can start to look at it spiritually. And that's what I want to do from, from this point forward before we get to our next fear-free verse. And that's where you'll see the difference in the fear-free verse. So verse 5 says, All day long they injure my cause. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They stir up strife. They lurk. They watch my steps as they have waited for my life. And now again, go spiritual. Who is this they? You your flesh and the evil one which is satan it fits into here if you look at it that way all day long they injure my cause they're trying to keep you from following jesus they're trying to keep you down they're trying to make you believe lies all their thoughts are evil are against me for evil all of those thoughts in your brain that are speaking those lies are against you for evil. They want you to not trust God and to turn away. They want you to not praise God's word, not put your trust in God. And that is exactly where our fear for verse came in. This is the exact opposite of what David said he was going to do. Your brain and Satan wants to attack you by making you not trust and they're they're doing this by causing these thoughts they stir up strife they lurk they watch my steps as they have waited for my life that is exactly what was happening your whole life before you met christ your brain was trying to keep you far away from the knowledge of jesus and so was satan they were lurking they were waiting as for your very life, they wanted you to just continue down the trail of never knowing who Jesus was so that you would die and then spend your eternity in hell. That is exactly what your brain, your flesh, and Satan wanted to do to you. Attacking you, trampling you, oppressing you, keeping you down, and stopping you for coming, from coming to know Jesus. For their crime, will they escape? Question mark. And the answer is right there. In wrath, cast down the peoples, O God. So God is going to, at the end of days, he is going to cast down Satan. Uh, they will, he will not get away with what he's trying, tried to do for all these eons to humanity. Satan will be cast into, into hell. Now, verse 8 says, You have kept count of my tossings, Put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? And here we see the spiritual nature of the psalm turning very, very personal. And that is what we know happens when we come to know the Lord. Maybe not in the beginning when we just enter into the kingdom and we're saved. We have a, a bigger view of God and we know that God is the one that sent Jesus to save us, but it takes a while for most of us to develop the personal relationship with Jesus. But here we see in the Psalm, it's pointing to that personal nature. You God have kept count of my tossings, put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? So God is personal. He's watched every time you've tossed and turned in bed, you've been worried, you've been sick, you've been distraught. He's seen every bit of, of all of that and he's, and he's kept count of it. He's also put your tears in a bottle and he's, he's, he's saved them up. He's watched every time you've shed a tear. It's a beautiful 
a snapshot of the a personal nature of relationship that builds over time when you've come to know Jesus. First, it's a great big view of God. Yes, he's great, he's mighty, he saved you. But then it becomes a personal, intimate relationship. And here it says, are they not? All the recordings of your tossings at the night and all your tears, are they not in your book? Yes, they are. When you come to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Everything you've been through, it's all recorded there. None of your sins are held against you, but God knows that your name is in his Lamb's Book of Life. And when you come to your dying day and you're face to face with Jesus, He's going to look in that book, the Lamb's book, book of Life. He's going to see your name there, and, and, and nothing is going to be counted against you. And, and all of your tossing and all of your weeping, he's going to surround you with his love, and he knows every bit of it. It's all been recorded. So it's beautiful, and it shows this personal nature of the relationship that you will have, if you don't have it already, you will have with Jesus if you just keep walking with him. And if you haven't come to know Jesus, this is a beautiful just call to you to come to know Jesus. And this is what the relationship will look like. Instead of just this God in the sky image, you're going to have a personal image of, of God, a God who died for you. He took on flesh, hung on a cross so that all your sins would be wiped away and you will spend eternally, eternity with him in heaven instead of going to hell. Now the psalm continues and it says, then my enemies will turn back in the day when I call. A beautiful, a beautiful idea of what happens when you pray, when you call out to God, God goes to battle for for you. He starts to vindicate you against your enemies. He starts to give you peace in your mind. He starts to fight against Satan. This is what happens when you go to God in prayer. Again, when you have a personal relationship with him through Jesus, God hears you when you call. And then David says this beautiful thing, this I know that God is for me. So even though he and, and others and you might be going through all kinds of stress and strife and, and pains on this earth. You can know that God is for you. He hears you. He's for you. He died for you. And he will never, ever leave your side. He's with you. And even though it might seem like a terrible suffering that you're going through on this earth, God is for you. And I'll tell you, this is very personal to me because I've been going through some, some physical suffering and I spend many, many nights tossing and turning and, 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 and weeping um, just because of the pain that I, I am in. And so um, many times, you know, I, I think at, at those times, I know this is for me. I know that God, he's not causing it, but he's allowing it. And he's sanctifying me through it. He's making me more and more like Jesus because there's never a time in your life that you're not more like Jesus except when you're suffering. And so it's very hard to thank God for the suffering, but when you know that you're, you're, you're being refined by it and that God is still for you through it, it makes you put it in a different mindset. Now here is our Fear Free verse for today, and you're gonna see how it's similar to the first one, but a little bit different. In God whose word I praise, in the Lord whose word I praise, in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can man do to me? So now I want you to go yourself and compare verse three and four to verse 10 and 11, and you'll see what's a little bit different. All right, hopefully you're there and you can see the difference the added bit in the Lord whose word I praise and what can man do to me is in there instead of what can flesh do to me. So in this transition period between the two fear free verses, you see this beautiful intimate section which points to the personal relationship that David and you would have with with the Lord when you come to know him and you're walking with him and you're allowing yourself to trust in God to fight your battles through your sickness, through your, your problems on this earth, through your trials, 
as you go through them, your trust in God becomes more and more and you start to see his personal nature more and more and you can include in your fear-free verse in the Lord whose word I praise. And because it uses the word the Lord, that's the personal name of God, Yahweh, instead of God, which it says in the beginning there, in God whose word I praise, it then adds in the Lord whose God I pray, whose, whose word I praise, in Yahweh. So not just God, which is the word Elohim, mighty God, but in the Lord, which is the word Yahweh, the personal name of God. I trust in Almighty God. He's my Savior. He sent Jesus. But I also believe in the Lord Jesus, the, the one who's just carrying me through day to day by knowing exactly what I've gone through himself. He lived on this earth. He suffered. He cried. He had affliction. He had people turn their back on him. He was alone. He, he was by himself. It was a very difficult time for Jesus. He was tempted in the wilderness and he had Satan just trying to get him to do all kinds of things. So Jesus, he knows exactly what I have gone through. He knows what you are going through. And the Lord is whom I put my trust in. It's his word that I praise as well as God the Father. Two different persons in, in a three-in-one triune God. And that's why the second fear-free verse adds that the Lord portion in there because you can see that very, very intimate bit of this of Psalm 56 that's in the middle that talks to that really, really sweet bit about the Lord who who collects those tears and knows your tossings. It's really, really lovely. And then of course, the fact that it says, what can man do to me instead of what can flesh do to me? Well, your lump of flesh in your brain, you can do all kinds of things to you even after you've come to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But the truth of the matter is, it really doesn't matter. Once you've come to know him, even though you might be attacking you all day long, your place in heaven is guaranteed. You cannot destroy that even though you might be really trying to undermine your own walk with the Lord by doing who knows what, by not being in your Bible every day, by not praying, by not um, serving, by not tithing. I don't know what it is that you're doing that's just undermining your entire walk with Jesus, but it doesn't really matter. You can do all these things and you can even go prodigal. The Lord is not going to turn his back on you. And so the only thing that you have left is mankind on this earth. And again, mankind can do nothing to you. Mankind might kill your body, but if you know Jesus, you're going straight to heaven, even though you might be trying to undermine yourself and, and mankind is trying to subvert you too. It really doesn't matter. Your place in heaven is guaranteed because you've put your trust in Jesus Christ for your remittance of sin. He did that work for you on the cross. So you're, you're in, you're going to heaven. There's nothing that you or man can do to you once you know Jesus. You might be attacking yourself, but you're not going to keep yourself from heaven. And that's something that you need to rest on, put your hope and trust on in, as the, this Psalm says in many, many times, put your trust in God's word, because that is what God, God's word says. And many people live their whole life afraid that they've messed up even though they've come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior they just believe that Jesus isn't going to forgive them and if only Jesus knew well believe me Jesus knows exactly what you've done what you are still doing and if you put your hope and trust in Jesus as your Lord and Savior you've asked him for to forgive your sins that's an ongoing promise from Jesus it's not just the sins you did in the past it's the sin you're doing today it's the sin you'll do in the future the only difference is after you've come to know him, you're convicted of your sin and hopefully you're trying to not do it. You're not living your life in willful sin. You're thinking to yourself, I do not want to do the thing, the very thing that hung Jesus on the cross. So that is the difference. So um, hopefully that 
is helpful for, for you. And I'll just, um, I'm going to end just by, I'll skip one verse, but I'm going to end with the very last bit of this psalm because it's beautiful. It says in verse 13, For you have delivered my soul from death, yes, my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of life. That is what Jesus has done for you. Delivered you from going to hell, keeps your feet from falling. If you let the Holy Spirit lead you, he will convict you and keep you on the straight and narrow path so you don't go into sin. And you will live your life in the light of life, the light of the light of the world, Jesus. And we, we see in Thessalonians that we do not we Christ followers are not people of the night. We are people of the day, people of the light. And that is what we're supposed to be on this earth. Keep shining your light. That's our call. Shine your light, live in the light, and just do your best to point people towards Jesus. Put their trust in Jesus so they can come to know him, the personal savior, Jesus, Yahweh. Um, it's a beautiful difference when you come to know him that way. And it's not just God in the sky. It's a God that you can pray to, that knows every tear, that knows every time you've tossed in bed and worry. Um, this, is the, this is the God that um, I know and I hope that you would come to know today. All right. It's in Jesus' name I'm doing this all. Bye now.